Another mistake people make is they don't take enough pictures of the event with them in it, and lots of them. Smile, say cheese. Hey, don't forget to take at least one photograph of you with someone at the event, of course. Also, take at least one photograph with you and the host of the event. After the event, you could send those photos to those who were featured in the photo for their use and posting online wherever they want to, if they want to. Encourage them to do this. This is a great way and a great time to send a thank you note as well to the host, especially if you send your photo to them for their use as well. If they post your photo on their networking company website, just imagine the exposure you get when you do something like that. It can help you with future networking events upcoming. By taking one or more photographs at the event and posting them online, this lets other people online, those who couldn't make the event, know that you're a mover and a shaker. Others really get the impression that you are somebody. You represent action and motivate others to want to know more about you. In some rare instances, be mindful about the photo you're taking and let the other person know that you'd like to post it on your website or on some kind of social media website, per se. While it's not a requirement, it's just a courtesy to kind of ask permission, hey, do you mind if I post this on my website, even though you're at a public event? Some people, you just, you know, you want to be kind to them, like in the sense that you know, maybe they're uncomfortable with themselves on camera or for whatever reason. Just ask. It's nice. You know, again, it's not a requirement. It's just courtesy to ask. In this way, you kind of gain instant rapport with them, you know, those in the photograph. But here are some places that you can put your photograph just as a reminder. When you take those pictures, here's where you can put them. Facebook, Instagram, Photo Bucket, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Twitter, your own website, anywhere else that you can think of. This is great for your business and branding. The more you are seen out there, and that's really what we're talking about. It's just being seen. You know, that's kind of low cost to be seen. When you're seen out there, even people who missed the event you attended, seeing you in so many photographs make people think and feel like they already know you. This can translate easily into a call or an email to you with confidence on their part. Hey, you just looked like somebody I wanted to reach out and talk to. Perhaps your services can help me. I clicked on your link and I went to your website and I read all about it. Do you have a few minutes to talk to me about XYZ? Many times these people are calling you maybe out of the blue. So definitely take some time and see what they want. <laughs> taking photos is another great way to connect with people, especially if you are taking a lot of them with groups of people. Make this a habit. Ask, hey, can I take a picture of all of you? I'll take your picture, you take mine, take us, all of us group picture. By the end of the night, you might end up with 10 to 20 great pictures with a lot of people in it. Select the best and upload them all if you want. Again, do send those photos to those people taken in the photo so that they can share it on their networks. And then you're on your way to becoming a well-known and quickly recognized while you become a familiar face to many. Walk tall, walk confidently. Walk like you're ready to pour a thousand percent of energy into meeting each person one-on-one -on -one for the very first time. Appear before them with a radiant smile, shoulders back, ready to lean in for a firm handshake. Even if you don't feel like you can. <laughs> Practice makes perfect, right? Get excited. Get pumped. Get into your happy-to-meet-you mental zone. So when you do meet someone new, they sense your heightened energy and feel as if they could confidently express what they do and what they need in hopes that you might be able to help. By circulating throughout the room like this, leaving a trail of inspired conversationalists, imagine your presence at a networking event, sending out an aura of magnetic energy that attracts the right attention and reaction from people who might be saying, Did you meet that guy? Did you meet that gal? Did you meet... Wow, what a great conversation. Oh, you, you definitely need to go meet him or her. Come, let me introduce you. I, I actually want to go back and talk to them again. Come on, let's go check it out. Be the first to reach out to people. 
You may not be the host of the next networking event, but there's no reason why you can't be the star by being the most accommodating person in the room, reaching out to people who are struggling to meet others. While we all tend to be attracted to those people who are either the center of attention or appear successful, there are individual gems out there to meet. All you have to do is meet them for the first time, and everything else unravels nicely. So be outgoing enough to make people feel welcomed. You might even be mistaken by someone thinking that you're the host. <laughs> Not a bad mistake. Accept the compliment. We never know if that quiet person may know someone who can introduce you to someone you need to meet. It's those quiet ones who can also open big doors into companies and opportunities you've been waiting to get into for a long time. Leave no stone unturned. Talk to as many people as you can, even the quiet ones. Be the first person to say, hey, what's your name? Not initiating the hello, what's your name question actually wastes your time. With so many people in the room to meet, you can't wait on people to come up to you or approach you, so you got to approach them. Many people are shy and feel awkward meeting new people. Not you. You seize opportunities to meet new people. You just go for it. Take the initiative and make the first move. About 99% of people will appreciate it. The other 1% are looking to do this same thing and meet you first. That's okay. You can take this chance to try out different opening lines. Start with a compliment or ask a question about the event. So, have you tried anything from the buffet table yet? What looks good to you? How'd you hear about the event? Start off the conversation as if you have already been talking to them for a while. Try different approaches besides the suggested title of this tactic. You know, hey, what's your name? You can do better than that. You know, what's your name? Again, like I said, something like, so how'd you hear about the event? Where'd you come from? So what happened today that was really exciting? What are you doing tonight? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover, or a person by its cover, or what they look like. This is a typical mistake people make. They think, oh, look how that person is dressed, or how he or she is not working the room. I'm not sure I want to meet that person. Little do you know that that person you don't want to meet actually might turn out to be the person you do want to meet. Throw away any judgmental or elitist attitudes and be open to meet everyone and anyone. Mm. Someone you haven't even met yet may be one of your biggest fans and can refer you to an ideal prospect, maybe introduce you to a whole new world you never would have known before. Or had you not taken the time to disregard your prejudices and actually spend a few quality minutes talking to this person you misjudged, ugh, you could lose out on so much. So again, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge people by what they look like or how tall or short or doesn't matter. That one person might hold the key to advancing you to the next level. You don't know. Be nice to everyone. You never know who's standing before you, behind you, or next to you. Be gracious to everyone in the room. Everyone has a story. Everyone has life's pressures and anxieties and triumphs and successes and failures. Be generous with yourself to everyone. Again, that person you are kind to just might be the person who can help you along your journey to the next stage of your own success. People love helping others who are sincere and authentic and real. Talk less. Listen more. Another mistake people make. Have you heard the saying, we were born with two ears and one mouth? Translated, it means don't talk too much. <laughs> and listen more. Let the other person do most of the talking without interrupting. This will allow you time to think about what is being said. So you can reply with information and relative questions, which will make a knockout first impression. No one likes to be fire-hosed to death 
with a non-stop spray of never-ending words, talk in sound bites and complete phrases that can be easily understood. Don't talk over someone. Pause in between providing ample openings for the other person to kind of reply and get a word in edgewise. Have you ever been in a little conversation where somebody's doing all the talking and it's like, whoa, I want to respond to 10 things that they just said. So when you talk, ask more questions versus making statements, keep the focus on them. It's perfect to keep the conversations to about 70, 30. That is 70% represents the other person and their conversations towards you. And then 30% represents your responses and the time you spend with questions and statements, stimulating more conversation. So 70, 30, not too much like 80, 20. Well, and you know what I mean? 70, 30, 80, 20, you get the idea. A majority on their side talking and a minority on your side talking because your statements are mostly questions. You're hunting for information. We've been to many networking events and listened to networkers that talked nonstop while trying to convince you that they have the best product or service since sliced bread. Maybe they do. Or maybe they're lonely and don't get out much. This is your chance to kind of channel the conversation and make it move in the direction that gives value to both sides. Most people's brains can't remember much about the conversation anyway, let alone all the people that they meet at an event. So keep the conversations interesting, short, brief, productive, leaving openings for people to continue the conversation later when time permits, possibly afterwards at a scheduled time. If you have a product or service to sell, focus on the outcomes, the results, and the experiences of others. Stories sell. So there's no need to tell folks what you do per se. If you can narrate in an entertaining and effective way with stories, telling stories about yourself and even better with a sense of humor, <laughs> maybe you can relate a success story that would appeal to the group and give them an idea of how you handle a certain situation, you know, but just don't overdo it. And many times when you're telling these stories, you know that since you asked them a lot of questions first, the stories you do tell tie in right on bullseye with what that other person was talking about. So talk less, listen more. That's something we all need to work on. Maintain a little mystery about yourself when talking to others. Okay. A lot of people don't do this. They don't think about holding back a little bit maintaining a little mystery about themselves. I know that I do it a lot and Noah's always like, Bart, tell them what you do. I'm like, I will in time. I'm asking them questions. Don't give away the farm and tell everyone everything about what you do up front. Hmm. Retain some element of mystery about yourself, encouraging people to ask you more questions. Like dating you don't want to give away everything up front. Tease a little. Talk a little. Dance a little. Leave something to the imagination so that it draws interest in you from other people. Otherwise, if you tell them everything, they might say, Okay, thanks a lot for all that. I don't have any questions for you. I've got to go. Maybe we can talk later. Yeah. Don't count on it. Making people feel they want to know more about your products and services helps draw them in closer to you. By invoking some mystique and telling your story, they're hooked. For example, many people today have few streams of income, sources of income. We've been to events where people felt they needed to give you a full report on everything that was going on in their business right now down to the bottom line. Focus on one topic at a time. It's not easy for people to engage in a dialogue when time is restricted. Save your other activities and interests for that follow-up call that you make after the event. Again, just maintain a little bit of mystery, tease a little, never leave your customers wanting more, never leave people fully satisfied 
oh, hey, time's out. Hey, look, I want to kind of move around and meet some other people tonight because we're limited on time. Can we continue this conversation tomorrow? What are you doing tomorrow? Are you free tomorrow? I'll give you a call.